Hey y'all, my name is Tyndall Hutchinson and I'm so excited to be a finalist for the iHeart Flying Scholarship. Thank you to everybody on the scholarship committee for taking the time to read through hundreds of applications, especially mine. It really does mean the world to me. So a little about me, like I said, my name is Tyndall Hutchinson. I am 20 years old. Uh, in case you can't hear from my thick Southern accent, uh, I originate from Florence, South Carolina. I grew up there. I lived there almost my entire life. Uh, I currently live in Orlando, Florida for 141 school. And honestly, I'm living the dream. I'm so excited to be in Florida for flight training. It has been such an exciting time, even during COVID. So some more about me, uh, especially regarding aviation. Uh, I started flying probably in August, 2018. Uh, August, 2018, I took my first discovery flight. Unfortunately, um, it did not go very well. Um, Sadly, I had a flight instructor tell me that women do not belong in the cockpit. And I'm not gonna lie, that hurt my feelings. <laughs> it hurt my feelings, it made my gut wrench, and it kind of turned me away from wanting to continue flying. And I know that sounds, you know, kind of bad, but uh, like I said, being from rural South Carolina, our options for CFIs as well as flight training is very minimal. We do not have a lot. So it actually took me a probably about another year and some change to find another CFI in which I clicked with and I loved. And so after I did that, after I found my token CFI, she was amazing. I did some hours with her. I had to work three jobs while in full-time college to pay for my flight training. Um, so I got a little bit by a little bit done, but it wasn't a lot. Um, so I started coming to the realization that something had to change quickly if I wanted to get my private done in a timely manner. So I ended up deciding in December 2019 that full-time 141 school was going to be the best option for me. So I ended up leaving college. <laughs> I can hear my mom cringing 500 miles away. I ended up leaving college and moving to Florida for 141 school. Um, I'm currently working on my private pilot license. Um, as of filming this, I am on hour 49, which is wild because it feels like just yesterday I was hopping in the plane to start. But I'm on hour 49. I'm currently working on night cross countries and getting ready to solo. So that is wild, exciting, I love it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've had a great time here in Florida. I have some of the best flight instructors I've ever had. I have a great community of people to really push me to get me where I'm going. So I'm so thankful for that. Um, but yeah, I, without aviation, uh, I don't know where I'd be. If I had to pick three traits that definitely describe me, I would have to pick probably grit, patience, and compassion. So when it comes to grit, grit means courage. I remember when I first started training, uh, I was absolutely petrified of landings. I would have to get in the plane every day with some type of courage to get those landings done so I could satisfy landings. Those were the hardest two weeks of my life because every time I would go to land, I would be death gripping the yoke thinking, okay, we gotta land, we gotta land, we gotta land. But that wouldn't have happened if I didn't have the courage to get in the plane and do it over again. It also ties into patience. Patience in aviation is a big deal. I think we as pilots, especially in, in full-time flight training, we have the, the tendency to think that things happen overnight or we can get all our hours within a week or we can satisfy a rating in a month and be done. And honestly, that's not the case. Going to full-time flight training has taught me that I need to be patient. I've had to learn again with landings that it takes patience. You have to do it over and over and over again for it to click. And I've actually become a very patient human being because of aviation. And the last one is definitely my favorite. It has to be compassion. Aviation has taught me a lot of compassion the past couple weeks, as well as COVID. Um, compassion for me has been loving my neighbor to helping my friends get through some really bad lessons or just maybe not passing that track ride the first time. Being compassionate within my aviation journey has taught me to open my arms to new experiences and to just love everything that's going on, no matter how hard it is or how bad it's, it's gonna feel to study all night or really anything of the sort. 
So yeah, my three traits definitely would have to be grit, patience, and compassion. One of my missions in Private Pilot has definitely been working on my confidence. Uh, while this is not a completed mission as of yet, it's definitely have gotten a whole lot better. When I first came into Private Pilot, obviously I knew nothing. I was terrified. I had been studying before even my first lesson and I thought just hopping into the left seat of the airplane would make me a confident pilot and <laughs> let me tell you that is not how it works. <laughs> I, I was not patient with that. I. I was under the belief that, you know, as soon as I sat in that seat, everything would come. I was wrong. <laughs> I had a flight instructor tell me in a ground brief a few months ago that knowledge produces confidence. And I loved that. That that really struck a chord with me. So I started taking that saying and put it into full force in my journey. So what I did to start building my confidence was definitely studying the work being able to talk to instructors more, flying more, picking up extra lessons when even though I really didn't want to, I did it anyway. And if you had to ask me from my first lesson all the way to my current hour, which I'm in my 49th hour, how much my confidence has jumped, it's an unmeasurable amount. I can't say it's perfect confidence, but it is a major, major increase. So that's my mission during Private Pilot, is definitely becoming a more confident pilot. With all that being said, I am definitely aiming to be done with my Private Pilot license by September 1st, 2020. Uh, due to Florida weather, uh, we have thunderstorms basically every single day, so having to work around convective signets and just crazy Florida weather, <laughs> um, I'm actually being pretty lenient about that. Um, considering I'm on hour 49, um, I'm just now doing nine cross countries and I'm working on some solos in the near future. It shouldn't be too much longer. I already do have my pilot pilot written done. I'm just waiting to obviously finish up those lessons and do my oral and do my check ride and then that is it. So there really is not much left to go, um, but there definitely is a lot of learning to be had. So like I said, we are aiming for September 1st, 2020, if not sooner. COVID-19 has been a very interesting experience. Usually with how the airport works at my 141 school, it's really busy. You know, we share with private jets, we share with huge air buses, and we also share with um, the entire fleet at our 141 school, which is very large. And it's almost like overnight, it went silent. Nobody was moving, nobody was flying, no airbuses were taking off on Niner Left. It was crazy. Uh, it, it was like a switch had been flipped overnight. And that kind of sent me panicking because I was like, oh my gosh, I just moved across the country. I'm going to have to stop training. I'm going to forget how to fly an airplane. This is terrifying. <laughs> but it actually ended up working the other way around. So. I have to applaud my 141 school. They had taken huge precautions. We were being encouraged to wash our hands, not touch our face. We have to wear a mask on property. We have to wear a mask when we fly. It's It's been crazy, <laughs> but we've made it work. I'm very, very thankful that I have been flying during COVID-19, even with everything that's happening in the world. Um, but I've actually used COVID-19 to really dig deep into why I'm in school, why I want to be a pilot, and what I want to do for the rest of my life with my pilot license and my ratings after that. And it's it's been a weird time. I'm not gonna lie. It's there's not a there's not a how to God about how to do this. So I'm just having to wing it. But most of the time during COVID nineteen I have been using this time to study a whole lot more. I'm using this time to talk to other pilots who are already in corporate jobs who are at the airlines, asking them how they are adjusting. You know, I'm asking them how their training went. I'm taking this time to really learn from others about, you know, what they learned, what they wish they could have done better, and much more. I'm using this time to really connect with other pilots, you know, <laughs> with, with COVID happening, especially in Florida, because we have some very high COVID rates, we can't have women in aviation meetings. We can't have 99 meetings. I can't even go to the meetings of the group that I started at my 141 school for women. So it's like, what do you do? So I've actually used social media of all places. I have used TikTok, I have used Instagram, I have used Facebook to connect with any possible 
woman that is involved in aviation to just pick her brain. Uh, I have used Facebook groups to voice concerns about that I have for training. I have used them to praise other people who are continuing training. I have also used it as a source to network. I think I can name probably 50 female pilots off the top of my head right now that I've met off of Facebook who have become mentors to me overnight. And coming to think of it, without COVID-19, that probably wouldn't have happened because now that I'm actually having to put myself out there in order to get a mentorship or to ask for help because I can't figure out how to land at night, it's it's really cool. It's, it's this really cool experience that I don't think I would have had if the world was still operating normally. So I've used COVID definitely to look at the resources I have and expand on them and look for new information and new mentorships and things you would never thought of in, in different ways. So at the end of the day, COVID-19 has actually been very beneficial to my private pilot training. I would love to be considered for the scholarship so I can continue my flight hours and be able to use some more resources such as simulator time, extra flight hours, or even just some more physical resources such as textbooks or even some e-learning just so I can continue to gain some more knowledge within the private pilot period. Uh, I have realized throughout my training that these resources are immensely important into creating awesome pilots. So I would love to be able to have this scholarship and be considered for this scholarship so I can continue my learning to make sure that I am a great pilot, but also a safe pilot. Once again, thank you so much for letting me tell my story about how aviation changed my life and continues to make it even better every single day. I am so thankful I get to wake up every day and fly airplanes, and hopefully that's how it'll be for the rest of my life. I Heart Flying, thank you so much for the incredible opportunity. You really are changing women's lives.